Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And today we're going to take a look at variables and pointers as they relate to assembly language, and in our case specifically x86 assembly language. So I have Visual Studio up and running over here using the Irvine library, so that should be already set up on your system. I'm going to be visualizing everything just using Excel and just kind of talking through what's going on as we manipulate everything because you know and, and just showing RAM because obviously that's where all our variables are stored as our program is running. So I'm just going to set up a normal normal everyday variable int y I'm sorry int x equals 9 and so how would I go about doing that? So like the variable name goes first in assembly language that's x and so now int, what is int? We have to think. It, from an architectural standpoint, what we're doing in our class, int is a 32-bit signed quantity. So that means I have to use a signed double word. Because word is 16 bits, double word is 32. So And signed, obviously, because you know int is signed by default. So signed double word value gets put in as 9. So what does that mean over here when it comes to setting up our program? And I go, oh shoot, I erased it from earlier. And I go, there's a memory location, 604000. I'm going to say it wrong a couple hundred times. But that's the memory location. We're going to see that that's where the data segment starts. And so to us on our end, this variable is called x. But as it gets translated from our assembly language into raw binary, that x is going to be translated into that memory address. So the value 9 is going to be stored in here. Remember, little endy in order. We're just, that's not important, but just understand that you know, 9 is all, you know, all over the place through those 4 bytes of memory. And since this is 4 bytes, might as well put this here just to understand what's going on. So that's what happens when I set this up. And so we can prove this. So I can move into the EAX register. I can move the offset of X. And then I can call write hex. And then I can... Uh, move into AL register just a space and I can call right character and then I can do this one more time for just the value of X and then write hex and when I run this then you'll see we'll see the memory location and we will also see its value so zero zero four ah shoot oh well had a 50 50 shot I guess right so 406000 is the memory location for the data segment, and that value stores a 9. And so that's how pretty much every variable works under the hood. And, you know, so across the board, that's just kind of how things go. So now, how do pointers fit into all this, right? The fun of pointers, we love to hate them, hate to love them. But, uh, you know, they're definitely something we use all the time. Even in other languages, we just call them references. So if I want to set up basically like int pointer y equals address of x, something like that. Oh yeah, please note, you should probably go back to my C++ video. It's an eight-minute video. If you need the same understanding of what I'm doing here, but doing this in a C++ context, so you can get ready for this video. Pause it or whatever, come back later. So I'm going to say, okay, y is the name of this thing. And you go, okay, shoot, what is, what is the data type for this thing? And so a pointer is a pointer is a pointer. It doesn't matter if it's a byte or a word or a double word. It's architecture dependent, and in architecture in our case means 32 bits of storage. We're, we're working in a 32-bit environment. So just the same, it's a double word. It doesn't have to be signed. It probably could be signed, never tried it. But the, the fact is it's a 32-bit address that's being stored, so we better have a 32-bit address for this thing. And then to finish the thing off, address of x, offset of x. And that's how we would set up this thing. You don't have to put the word offset in here. But I love seeing offset because it screams out address of, it screams out pointer. It's, it makes things much more verbose and much more obvious what I'm looking at. And we need that in assembly language, even though we hate all the extra writing. But it helps me in the long run since I don't have to think back, what is x? Is it a pointer? Is it a value? What is going on? Okay, so then what does that mean over here in our, our adventure land over here in RAM? And I go... Well, why is the name of my variable? It goes right next door. Remember, the data segment in assembly language compacts everything as, into a space as small as it can. This is four bytes of storage. You're like, what is the memory location, though? Well, if this is 406000 and I move four bytes over from that, that's what we'll see here. 
And now what do we get for the value stored inside of here? The offset of x. So x is x to us. Offset means the hard-coded address. So what will be stored inside of there is this value. And I can prove this to you uh, by, oops, call CRLF, and then do this all over again for y values, offset of y, and then move y in there and print this all out. And then there we go. So we, we haven't changed x, of course, so there's 406000, that's the value 9, and at 406004, that's the value 004. 0, 6, 0, 0, 0. So exactly right. So what does that mean for us? That's, this is correct. It's, sometimes it's scary to see these kind of things. Whatever value this is will always agree with this because this is pointing to this memory location. That's what a pointer does. So now at the end of the day again, what does that mean for us? That means that we now have a variable and we actually have two completely separate ways of modifying that value or using that value in our programs. I can directly access x, or I can indirectly access it through y. So let's show both ways to make this work. So the easy one, obviously, is just to change whatever's in x to 4 and then print everything out. So under the hood here, what happens? I've changed this to 4, and so at this memory location, you get the 4, and we didn't change y at all, so at this memory location, we get the same stuff. So yes, easy. I mean that's that's as you know as obvious as it can get. But what if I you know I can't just go ahead and and change y to four you know here on the other end? How would I indirectly modify the value in here? Let me just put this back here for the moment. So if I did this, this is just saying oh let's make this a four. This one right here and y. And obviously you see that's a problem because I'm not modifying this. And so now I have you know. I've redu I actually removed a pointer, like you can't even do that in any high level language like that has uh, static typing, because you're like, okay, this value went from an integer pointer, now it's just an integer, just a plain old integer value. So that's not anywhere close to what we want to do. But uh, one of the interesting things here is, is something as simple as using star y in C++ is a two-liner in assembly language. You're like, well, how do I make this thing work? So the reality is I have to go from y, and then I have to go from this memory location over to this memory location so I can access and change the value stored within. And so star y does not modify y in any way. It's just taking y, using it as, as a temporary value to dereference it to change the value. So we can't just directly use y anymore. We have to use a register or something outside of ourselves. We can't tinker with y directly. So I can move the y value into ECX. And so let me just set this up right here. And you go, OK. So that means take this value, pop it into here. And you're like, well, that's great. But now the second step is to take this value, dereference it so I can go to here, and then set the value to 4. So what I can do here is I say, OK, dereference ECX and set it to 4. There'll be one slight problem here, most likely. Let's see about that. Yes, you will get an error that says invalid instruction operands. And this, this screams out, like, what's going on? And so the problem comes with the fact that whenever you're dereferencing something like this, because it's treating it like a pointer, it doesn't know what it's actually pointing to. In C++ and Java, we know we're pointing to an int or a character or a byte or you name it. But here in assembly language, all we have is a raw memory address. It basically, if you want to think of a void pointer, it doesn't know. So we have to supply and say, we're using signed double word. Just have to spell it right. So I have to supply the signed double word pointer to say, OK, the 4 is going to go into whatever memory location this thing is stored at, like move over here. And we have to tell it, oh yeah, it uses 4 bytes of storage. So treat it like the signed double word that it is. So let's see, what does that do for us? So now you see, exactly like we did before, this value here stores the 4, because it did. It, it, you know, like I put this value in here, then I use that to dereference to go here and put the 4 in that place. So that's why this value here is a 4, and then the, this value points to the same stuff. And so that is how I indirectly go from y to get into x to change that value. 
So I know I definitely know the first couple the first couple hundred thousand times I worked with pointers, this idea blew my mind because it was just completely different a different way of thinking. And so it might maybe you got it on the first or second try. That's awesome. Maybe you're just like me and it's gonna take a little while. So watch this video, try out a few different examples, send me an email if you're a student. You obviously can send me a message through the, uh, the YouTube system here uh, if you want as well. I'm open for anybody around the world sending me any questions. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but definitely, this is a great start looking into how we set up variables, how we set up pointers here in assembly language. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.